How do you like your birthday present? Wow, I love it. It's great. I just don't know how to solder. That's okay. I can teach you how to do that. Welcome to hack number 37. This week we teach Lisa how to solder. And what's the first rule of soldering, Lisa? Safety glasses. That's right. You gotta wear your safety glasses. Even Albert has safety glasses. So everybody needs to wear safety glasses when you're soldering because you could have a piece of solder fly up and hit you in the eye. A friend of mine had that happen once. He had to go to the doctor and have it pulled off. Yuck. But it can happen. So make sure you have safety glasses. And then we have solder here. We have some desoldering braid. We're going to talk about how to use that. You need side cutters when you're working with circuits and soldering things on, and you're going to need wire strippers, a really good soldering iron, and the kind I really like is the one that's temperature controlled. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. And for starters, we're going to get you soldering some wire first. I'll teach you how to tin wire before you solder things on it. You ready? Yep. All right, let's go. So this is my Weller soldering station. It's a WES51. Let's turn it on. Its uh, temperature is variable right here in this potentiometer all the way from 350 degrees all the way up to 850 degrees. For most of the stuff we're going to do we want about 650 degrees. And this is the soldering tip right here. You can see it has a little bit of solder on it. That's called tinning. It's a tinned tip meaning there's some solder stuck on there. This is a wet sponge and periodically you take the soldering tip and wipe it like that to get rid of the oxidation. And if I can get the autofocus here to kick in, see how shiny it looks now? All the oxidation is gone. The part you see right there, that's all oxidized and we don't want that. We want a nice clean tip. So remember every once in a while you want to clean the tip off. If you have a regular soldering iron, just any old wet sponge will work to help you keep the soldering tip clean. Now let's take a look at how to tin wire. And just to start out, let's go ahead and tin the tip of the soldering iron just a little bit. To do that, you just melt a little bit of the solder on it. The smoke that's coming off is the, uh, the rosin burning off, and that is a chemical that helps clean the surface of the metal so the solder will stick to it. So we'll wipe off that little bit of excess now. And the main trick with soldering is whatever it is you want the solder to stick to, you need to get up to the same temperature as the melting point of the solder, roughly 600 degrees or so. So we'll put the heat right on the wire. And a little rule I like to keep in mind is heat rises, so if you kind of usually apply it somewhere near the base of what it is you're trying to solder, the heat will rise up. And to help it conduct the heat a little bit, I usually put just a little dab of solder there. And then you can see how the wire itself is actually melting the solder because it's hot enough. And if you just move the tip around on the, on the uh, wire a little bit, there it is. This wire is now tinned. It has solder on it. Okay, now we'll at least I give it a try. Go ahead and dab just a little bit onto the tip first. You'll see how quick it melts. It's almost instant. And then just get a little heat on the wire. Apply a little bit of the solder to it, and it should just kind of wick its way right onto the wire. It's still not very there. Okay. We go. Here you go. Now just move the tip across the wire a bit. That's it. You're done. That was easy. Yeah, it's not that hard really. It's just a little bit of practice, and it's like when you're a little kid learning how to use a pencil the first time. It takes a little practice. So. Okay, you're ready to learn how to solder on a printed circuit board now. Yep. Okay. This is a resistor that I have here and a piece of perf board. And the perf board has copper on it already. And uh, you use that when you're prototyping and just designing a circuit for the first time. But it's also good to practice doing some soldering on a printed circuit board. So we will take this resistor and we will bend the leads just at 90 degrees like that. And then we're going to put that onto the board through a couple of holes like that. And when you flip it over, it's not going to want to stay in there. It's going to want to kind of fall out. So let's put it back in. And what we'll do to keep it in place is bend the leads a little bit 
like so. Bend one that way, the other one that way, and then it stays in place. And we can solder it. So now we will put it into the third hand tool. And I'll do one of these and you can do the other one. When you're doing a printed circuit board on a component, the place you want the heat is right where the component wire comes through the printed circuit board. So let's get the very tip right there. And then we'll get a little bit of solder on there. And then you just add a little more and you'll see how it'll it'll pull up and it'll stick to the wire and to the pad. And it kind of looks like a little Hershey's Kiss when you got it right. So you can go ahead and do the other one now. That's it. You got it. It does look like a Hershey's Kiss. Yep. Okay, let's open that up, Lisa, and see what's inside. This is from uh, the Maker Shed, and it's made by Evil Mad Science, evilmadscience.com. And this is a LED, a deluxe LED menorah kit. And it uh, simulates a, a real menorah, which is how many candles? Eight plus one, so nine. So it's like it's going to take the place of nine candles. And what do we got there? We got yellow LEDs. We've got a bunch of resistors. We have a little microcontroller that's already programmed. Looks like that's probably, that's our little switch. switch. That's what's going to make the LEDs light up. This is a, a little tantalum capacitor. This is the stand that holds the battery pack and the circuit board. And you can see on the circuit board they did this nifty thing of showing you where all the components go. This is the soak screen side of the board, and this is the side where the soldering happens, also known as the component side. Let's take a look at those instructions. Wow, that's cool. They're kind of drawn out like a comic book. Looks like they're pretty easy to follow. And it shows you absolutely everything you need to do and when you cool. need to do it. All right, what's first on our list? Looks like we got everything laid out. We have our soldering stuff going on. Oh, it looks like we have two different options of how to build it. Maybe go for the traditional look? Yeah. Okay. Definitely in the center. All right. Those of us that are symmetrical people. Looks like first one's install resistors, so let's get started with that. First thing we'll do is get the resistors pulled off from that sticky tape thingy. And then it says to bend them. Mm-hmm, just like we did in our practice piece. Do the first one and see if it works? Yep. And then on the back side, you just bend them, push it all the way through and bend them back at about 40, 40 degrees, 45 degrees. Just a little bend is all it takes so they don't fall back out. All right, that's one. All right, last one. We're ready to solder them now, right? Yep. Wow, you even got them all in the same direction with the gold band on the same side. Nice. Okay, first row is done. We get the leads clipped off. Uh oh, looks like you got the last two leads. Bridged with a little bit of solder there, huh? Plus, some of this is sticking up. Is that except? Yeah, that, that little okay? bit poking up's okay. We can trim everything up, make it look a little nicer later. But we need to deal with that uh, little bit of solder that's between there. So this is a good opportunity to show you how to use the desoldering braid. This stuff is kind of like a. It's copper wire and it's braided, and it will absorb. It'll just pick up solder if you put it on there right on the place you want to desolder and use the soldering iron and uh, get it hot and it'll take some of the solder back off so I'll give you a little demo on how that's done you just put it right on whatever it is you want to 
take solder away from. It's a little tricky. And then just the whole works. If you wiggle the soldering iron a little, it helps the heat get in there. And you can see how it just picked it right up. Right there. A little too close for my camera. It's on the uh, end of the soldering braid now, and it's no longer on there. Now we can just do a quick touch up on those two because we have to put some back since we took some away. Look at that, she's soldering like an assembly line worker now. This is fun. Not much of that goes on anymore, it's all pick and place to components these days. Okay, C1 is right there. We're starting the microcontroller chip. Ah, this is the brain. It says locate the end with the half circle. So there's a half circle here, and there's a half circle here. Match the ends and insert, insert the chip. Wow, that went in really easy. Those things can be a little tricky sometimes. Flush to the board. Yep, all well, the they way were, down. They were not bent. Solder all 20 pins. Okay. I'll show you a little trick with these, Lisa, because they can just fall right out when you flip the board over, and they don't have long enough leads to really bend. So what you can do is you can just set it vertical, like that, and then take the solder and just very carefully do one pin only. And that's it. That'll keep it in place for you. Now you can go ahead and flip it over all the way and finish up the soldering. Oh. That's it. Are they all done? Controllers in. Okay. We did all 20 pins. Now it's time for the battery box. Look at the bottom of that. I'll show you something on those LEDs. Look at it from the bottom up. See how there's a flat spot next to one of the leads? Yep. You look at it real careful. One lead is longer than the other. Well, the longer lead is the positive lead. I just came up with a little method here to hold this and make it a little easier for Lisa to solder these because they're all kind of loose and flopping around. They're spaced by the little paper spacer, but I've got the third hand holding the circuit board and my level pushing against the LEDs. So if they're all ready to go, you can go ahead and solder those all up now. Got all the rest in. Now we're putting in the ninth one, also known as the shamash. It's a little higher than the rest. We'll solder just one pin to hold it in place. Then we can flip it over and do the other one. Okay, we got the last one. I had to touch it up a little bit. Time to put the stands on now, right? Yes. Put the stands on. Time for batteries. Are you excited? I'm really excited. This is the very first electronics project you ever built. Yeah, I used to take a lot of them apart. Hope it works right the first time. No pressure. Yeah, Albert, the menorah is all done. We built it just for you. You ready to demo this thing, Lisa? Yeah, I can't wait. Okay, here we go. Let's turn it on. It's 
So that's in the demo mode, and then when we use it in its regular mode, that would be the first day of what? Hanukkah. Hanukkah? What's the menorah all about anyway, Lisa? Well, there was a particularly nasty revolt way back when, and they were rededicating the temple. They only had enough oil for the lights for one night, but it was a miracle because that oil lasted eight days. So oh. we have eight days of Hanukkah because of the miracle. And so you light a candle on each day? We light a candle on each day, and the middle candle is the shamus, and it's the helper. Ah. So it lights all the other ones. So then when we go back into the... That would be the first day. And when you push the button again, it goes into the second. And the third. And so on. And that's our menorah. And your first soldering project. That was really cool. You know how to solder now. That's amazing. It's also really handy. Yeah. What are we going to build next? Stained glass. Who? Not electronic, but it's soldering. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's hack. And happy Hanukkah to everyone. Merry Christmas. And keep on hacking.